materials used in this thing. And they advanced it seven years. To, uh, the first fuel tank is right up in this area here, near the apex of the wing. And uh, it's like a uh, tank car. The whole fuselage is uh, filled with fuel. It starts here, and there are five tanks that go through back to the tail, filled with fuel. And then each wing is six, or three fuel tanks of cavities in each wing. So that's six there. The total of the whole interior of this is, consists of about uh, 11 fuel tanks holding, uh, I think, 33,000 gallons of uh, JP7 fuel, jet fuel. When was the last time they flew one of these? When it, this one came in here in February of 69, is that correct? Oh, that was a... February the 4th of 1969. So they haven't flown one since then. Nope. Did it make a huge boom when it flew? No, uh, well, sure, certainly on the test program, but uh, uh, they flew it in here at uh, less than supersonic speed. And then they could control the boom? I mean, when this was at supersonic speed, you said you said the boom would move in and out. Would it, well, you still hear shock, a boom? The shock yeah. wave. Uh, this whole airplane is, is really designed to, uh, at the proper angle here to meet a shock wave at certain speeds. And uh, that's why you got this splitter and that sharp angle. So uh, it fit the shock wave uh, like that, but the, uh, the pressure moves into the inlet and you want it captured inside the inlet, but you don't want, you can't have it go all the way back if you put the shock wave of 2,000 mile an hour in the front of the jet engines in the back, they'd stop and you, they wouldn't run. So uh, that's why you had to keep the shock wave out the front here. And then another thing, this whole fuselage is designed as a lifting body so that it traps a shock wave underneath of it. Uh, the wingtips, for example, at supersonic speeds, they lower the wingtips and that traps even more of this uh, shock wave underneath of it. So it's a bit like a, a, a motor boat or a speed boat. It raises up and rides a shock wave at supersonic speeds, cuts down on the power requirements and, and uh, a lot of other things. So this is the most fantastic designed airplane in the world. As far as I'm they just don't use it because it's so huge and it... Well, the, uh, the program got killed because of cost, McNamara killed it uh, against uh, General LeMay's position, in spite of General LeMay, I'll put it that way. And uh, you see by that time, the Russians had probably shot down the U-2 up there, and uh, they were able to shoot, shoot higher defense, pardon, or de uh, Russian defense. Then we also had the IBMs, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. And uh, it's back to that story again, like Jim said, you got the ballistic missiles you're sitting in, and uh, they go do your bombing for you. So uh, we, according to McNamara, we couldn't afford the uh, B-70 program, and we didn't need the B-70 program for this cancer. Well, do they have um, airplanes that can pass the sound barrier and not make a boom? No. No, so they always make a boom. You you know when the shuttle the shuttle landed this morning at uh, about 8:10, uh, it made a boom. What? The shuttle. It uh, anyway the sonic boom goes with sonic flight. I guess you can use oh. that way. He was saying how this is designed so that it rides the sonic boom. Oh, well, it's really right well designed. Me. Also, was telling me huh. about the big actuators up above a nose wheel at uh, constant speed. And uh, if you don't regulate it properly, it can set up a resonance or a buzz. They call it a buzz because of the high frequency in and out of the shock wave. And that, uh, that's a bad condition that screws up the airflow to the engines and what you see up there. And that comes down 25 degrees for takeoff and landing. But because your CG center weight and center weight, and you got this long nose sticking out. You put a little surface out here, and you can do all kinds of stability and pitch control 
by low movements back here that can't be done with the tail surface because of all the relative drag and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of the long skinny nose out here and the canard wing that you can regulate pitch, stability. And for takeoff, on example, when this thing takes off, the flaps are down full 25 degrees on the nose. The tail surface is getting sucked into the air duct and wiped out from jet engines, so we had some problems yeah. with that. Do they still use that type of material? Honeycomb? Well, we've used honeycomb pretty extensively in here. One of the problems on the back over the years, I remember on the F-102, is what pitch roll and all of these things. Just a slight deviation can cause this thing to go this completely because of the high speeds and everything. So the flight control of this thing is very critical because at those high speeds, when, uh, but as I say, uh, with the thin air out there and all that stuff, it was very critical that they kept control of this, otherwise it tumbled. Right, there isn't that much control surface on it. No, well, uh, at this state, we used uh, hydrogen peroxide or something as a gas, and that was when that thing also part of the control is by jets like by that, jets. because it's beyond the capability of the surfaces. Well, this is similar to the one that Chuck Yeager broke the sound there. That one right back there. Oh, that one. Oh, okay. I think so. Scott Crossfield and Joe Walker and Boy, that looks like the whole gang that flew this X-15. But I don't think Chuck Yeager ever flew this one. Well, that Aurora aircraft is supposed to be rumored to be in excess of Mach 6, isn't it? Five or six? Yeah, like that. it's uh, that thing pretty fast. It's, uh, I don't know. It's uh, being I'm the kind of person I am, a lot of the rest of us around here, while we always fantasize about that project Aurora, uh, we had this fall, and of course Ben's retired from the Skunk Works. Mm -hmm. and he really took over from Kelly Johnson out there. Yeah, that's yeah, right. And uh, I've got Ben's uh, been with his, uh, auto autograph on a picture I took here of uh, Kelly. But, Kelly Johnson, but uh, of course, these were the leading questions uh, addressed to Ben Rich here. In the here he's not going to talk about that. No, he won't talk about that. Uh, all those high shows projects out there. But, but uh, it, it's intriguing. It's like CIA and all this other stuff. Uh, this guy was asking Jim about sweet, sweet water and then he writes all these stories. But, uh, you know, it's uh, the black planes and the stunt works and the hush fights and the yeah. secrets. And all you gotta do is put something classified, something secret, and it immediately becomes highly interesting. Highly interesting. A friend of mine retired out of the Air Force is in Still got one underneath that, the that's other. That's right. I took videos of it and went home. What I did, I just made a model of it. The blades are about this long. The rotor, the other blade that's on top. Yeah. It's just hard to believe that they don't hit each other. Uh, that, it, it's definitely, I don't believe it. <laughs> I know. Well, anyway, I built a model of it. Seriously, it's going to be about building up here. 